materials. Today we'll be looking at an important topic under physics, which is magnetic field of a straight conductor. In electromagnetism in physics, it has been proven that if a current flows through a straight line conductor in this direction, the current is going to generate a magnetic field around the conductor, which would be in this direction. And if the current goes through a straight line conductor in this direction, then the direction of our magnetic field is going to be reversed in this direction. It follows a law known as the right hand rule. Take for example, my thumb is the current. Then if the current moves this way, the resultant magnetic field will turn this way around the coil. Some experiments such as putting a conductor through a cardboard paper filled with iron fillings has proved that this theory is correct because when the current moves through it the iron fillings around the conductor on the cardboard paper would have a pattern and arrangement that shows that the magnetic field is moving this way so the aim of today's video is to derive the formula to calculate the amount or quantity of magnetic field that would be felt on a point P and a distance A away from the conductor. Take for example, this is our straight line conductor once again. And we have a point P away from the conductor the distance A. The already derived formula is B, the quantity of magnetic field felt at point P, is equal to new knots, which is a constant called permeability, I, the current passing through it, and 2 pi A, which is the distance. As a good physics student, it's an added, added advantage if we know how to prove or derive a formula, not just to use a formula. So, in order to prove this formula, we're going to be using about Savart law. Belt law says that the B equal to mu naught I the L sine phi of a four pi r square. Now this is about Savart's law. It says that the B is equal to the mu naught multiplied by the current passing through the wire in a little length sine file. Now the angle file, take for example, this is our conductor. And this is our point P. Our point P distance A from this conductor. The angle file is the the angle between the line drawn from the point to this conductor. This is our file. This is theta. Then here is our L, our increase in length, y, and our point x. So let's name this distance r. From this little diagram, we can see that sine phi is equal to a over r. And we see that a over r is the same thing as cos theta. So therefore, sine phi is equal to cos theta and this is our first step and from this equation here we can also show that r is equal to a over cos theta 
So, from our diagram also, we can tell that tan theta is equal to L over A. So, therefore, L is equal to A tan theta. In calculus, if we differentiate both sides, the L d theta would lead to A sec square theta. This is because the derivative of tan theta is actually sec square theta. So from here we can tell that our dl is equal to a sec square theta d theta. I hope we all understood how we got to this. So from this diagram we have established this equation, this equation, and this equation. These are the equations that we use to prove our formula. So once again, that Sabbath law says dB equal to mu naught I dL sine phi divided by 4 pi r squared. And our dL is equal to a sec square theta d theta. Our r is equal to A over cos theta and sine phi is equal to cos theta. So substitute all these parameters into the equation. Then the B would be equal to mu naught i a sec square theta d theta and our sign is cos cos theta all over 4 pi our r a over cos theta square from here now when we have a numerator over a denominator in the denominator area, this denominator will move up here. So therefore, our resulting equation is mu naught i a sec square theta d theta cos theta cos square theta all over 4 pi a square if a goes a goes here too and we know that in trigonometry cos theta is equal to 1 over sec theta so therefore the b would be equal to mu naught i sec square theta d theta cos theta 1 over sec square theta all over 4 pi a the cos square theta turns to 1 over sec square theta cos cos theta equals 1 over sec theta sec square theta go sec square theta go then we are left with this equation the b is equal to mu naught i cos theta d theta over 4 pi a. So we are left with this equation. So if we are to if we are to go further now, we find that our here is db, meaning we still need to integrate to get our b. What if we have to integrate this equation? We have to consider all the parameters, all the values of theta that we might have. We integrate between theta 2 as the upper boundary and theta 1 minus theta 1 as our lower boundary. So that means we are integrating from theta 2 
2 minus theta 1. But why did we take theta, this as positive, this as negative? The reason for doing that is so that we can account for all the values of our theta, all the values of this our theta that will lie in the positive axis and all the values that will be in the negative axis. This would take care of the negative theta as this for the positive theta. Now let's get started. Integral of dB would be equal to integral between theta 2 minus theta 1 mu naught i cos theta d theta all over 4 pi a. So we're integrating with respect to theta. i contains no theta, this contains no theta. All of these have no theta in them, so therefore they come out. Making b will be equal to mu naught i over 4 pi a integral between theta 2 minus theta 1 cos theta d theta. So the integral of cos theta is sine theta. But since it's between theta 2 and theta 1, we get b equal to mu naught i over 4 pi a sine theta 2 minus sine minus theta 1. And sine minus theta 1 would lead to plus. So this would be equal to sine theta 2 plus sine theta 1. So the equation we get after integrating between the two between the two limits is b equal to mu naught i over 4 pi a sine theta 2 plus sine theta 1. So this is not yet our equation, but this is a way forward. For an infinite length of the conductor, if our conductor have an infinite length, that is as L tends to infinity, As our length tends to infinity, we find out that theta would get bigger and bigger and bigger and it tends to 90 degrees. So therefore, as L tends to infinity, our theta, both theta 1 and theta 2, tend to 90 degrees, which is equal to pi over 2 in radian. So see that as our length goes to infinity, the 1 and the 2 goes to 90 degrees, which is pi over 2 radian. So our b would then become mu naught i sine pi over 2 plus sine pi over 2. This is in radian measurement over 4 pi a. Sine pi over 2 equal to 1. And since we have two of it, meaning one plus one equals two. So therefore, b equal to mu naught i times two divided by four pi a. Two goes one, two goes here, two. So therefore, b equal to mu naught i over two pi a. So we said that we've proved or we've derived our formula to calculate the magnetic field density from a conduct from of a point from a conductor using Biles Servat law. Mu naught is a constant whose value is 4 pi multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 7, and its unit is Tesla meter per ampere. I is the current passing through our conductor, and A is the distance of the point from the conductor. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, drop a like, and leave a comment. Thank you.